To put things very simply, I love running. And a few weeks ago, I attempted to train like an elite runner for one week. One more. It was tough. <laughs> well, I'm sure that won't come as a surprise to anyone, but I did really enjoy it and it was very rewarding in the end. And that was it. That was my original plan for this film. But as I gave it more thought, I came to realise that what I really wanted this to be about was reflection. And I wanted to do this by taking a look at some other runners and running communities and comparing their experiences to my own. And hopefully that can give me a better insight, particularly into the mental side of running, so I can answer the question, why do we love this simple activity so much? And what better place to begin than with the man who got me into running in the first place? My dad. Now, I may be a much faster runner than my dad, but I would consider him a smarter runner. There was a lot that I could learn from him, so it was time to sit down and have a chat. Okay, so first of all, hello dad. Hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, this is a very, this is just going to be a talk about, well, running in general and a lot of stuff about the mental side of running and preparing yourself for a race and whatnot. So I think the first thing to talk about really is obviously we both run for a club. Yeah. So we, a lot of our runs, we're running with other people as well. Yeah. Would you say that running with other people is more beneficial? I find it easier to run with other people. I like the fact that if, if it wasn't for a group session, a lot of people wouldn't get out running. Certainly on an easier run, it just makes the, the time go past quickly. When it's a bit harder, then it's having somebody else there, particularly if they're faster, just helps to drag you along. But when you are running alone, obviously when I did my week of intense training, while I'd normally train some days with the University Athletics Club, yeah. I did all my sessions on my own, aside from the park run, of course. Um, what do you do necessarily to, find, to um, help keep yourself motivated when you are running alone? That's really difficult. <laughs> um, you've just got to focus on what the goal is and why you're doing it. A lot of people often say that you really, with, with training, obviously it depends on the event, but you want to run about 80% of your runs easy and 20% hard. What, what do you think about it? <sighs> That's what I've been told. That's what I've read. I've seen 80-20 rule. Um, apparently it works. Um, but you've got to push yourself in training, otherwise you'll never be able to push yourself when it comes to a race. So you've got to be pushing and finding out where the boundaries are. And if you're not pushing those boundaries, they're never gonna move. So one of the things, when I think back to that week of training I did, one of the things I commonly see or think as a mistake that I made is with the easy runs, I often had a target pace in mind, but looking back at it, I now think that I should have just gone based on how I feel because that's what easy running really is. It's all very well having a pace in mind, but for whatever reason, if you're not up to it on that day, there's no point pushing. Things were going well. My dad is currently training for his first ever marathon in April, so pacing is obviously really important for that. But I couldn't go without briefly talking about the thing that actually got both of us into running, park run. When I did my, when I conducted some interviews at uh, Parkrun a few weeks back, I asked the question um, what their favourite thing about Parkrun was. One word was commonly the answer. Can you guess what that word was? The community spirit. Definitely the community. Yes. It's got to be the community. <laughs> Social side of it for me. Yeah, and it makes us get out and do some exercise. Friendly? Oh, you're, you're close. Okay, to be fair, he basically was right, but it is true. Parkrun has shown that there is a huge community of casual runners that stretch far beyond just the UK, that are willing to wake up early and attend every week, not just to run, but to be a part of the community. They'll even go on Christmas Day, which is exactly what we did. So we're here on Christmas morning, it's about half seven right now, setting up for Upfield Parkrun. It's quite muddy today and it's forecast to rain later, so conditions wise probably not the best but we're just out here enjoying ourselves dad's dressed as santa for the occasion and yeah we're just gonna have some fun today how, how do you i suppose mentally maximize the enjoyment of running in poorer conditions like with all the mud and you know with rain it's, wind it, it does every run counts so 
with tough conditions, doing it improves you fractionally for the next time. Having someone else in the family who loves running as much as me really does help me express my passion for the sport. But to get a better variety of runners for this film, I also wanted to talk to someone a bit faster. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. And when I say a bit faster, I really mean it. Because I've been lucky to get myself a quick interview with the British over 45s marathon record holder, Ian Leach. I like to run fast. And what is his marathon time? Two hours and 17 minutes. That's averaging 3.15 per kilometre. This was certainly someone worth talking to. One of the big challenges is the balance, is how can I respect, how can I do, how can I do well in the things that are really important, which are my family, providing for them in work, and doing well in work for myself, uh, but also taking that space appropriately that makes me feel whole because it makes me feel whole when I'm being active. It was also good to take a look at what Ian's perspectives on running were when compared to my dad. For example, a key aspect of my intense training week was adapting the lifestyle of an elite runner outside of just the runs, mainly with diet and sleeping habits. Did I sleep well last night? No, <laughs> no I didn't, I'm gonna be honest with you. Which meant trying new foods and getting more sleep than I usually would. But when I asked both my dad and Ian about this, they had very similar answers. I find I don't I don't change my diet a lot unless it's a unless a few times in my life where I've gone really all in on something in a marathon and I'll I've spent two or three months really not drinking much alcohol um, and watching things a bit. Yeah, diet's not something I've ever I, I've got anything into with running. Sometimes I think, you know, in a perfect world, loads of sleep, but the reality is you know, people live busy lives, and unless you're the very best of the best and you can afford that luxury. Before a race takes place, how would you say that you perhaps mentally prepare yourself to sort of maximise the enjoyment of just the running while you're physically going through, you know, the, the pain of the intensity? Personally, in terms of preparation, I think we're all different, but I am a fairly um, gregarious character. I, I, I like spending time with people, I muck around, I laugh and I joke. But if it's serious, I step away um, and I go through a really quite, you know, I become much more insular. I, spe I, 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 I get everything organised. I like to lay everything out, you know, exactly. I, I like it really planned. Um, so I just, so it feels, it feels special. It feels like I'm, I'm building. Uh, this is what, I've, this is what we work for. This is how we're gonna, we're gonna piece it all together. And this is not the time for pissing around. This is the time for. Uh, you know, this is a this is a time for, for for kind of yeah the big show. When you're actually in the race, how do you get yourself to like keep pushing, keep going? If you if you're close to getting an amazing time, but obviously your body's hurting and there's something there's always something in your brain that's trying to tell you no, you can't do this. But then, just how how do you just push on and get it done? Really, I think uh, I tend to be quite. Um, Although I'm, I've gone into a focus mode when I actually start racing, I'm often quite, um, I enjoy it. I think when you come to the hard moments, um, I was running with a guy, Jamie, last night, and he's, he's really coming through. I said, Jamie, man, I said, I can tell when I was getting ahead of you, it really annoyed you. It was like, this is like, you took it as a personal insult, the fact that I was trying to take you down. And I said to him, and, and I said to him, I really like that. Because he was like, he was, he was simply was not having it. It was like, and I don't know what he was saying to himself or the story that he was making in his mind, but it drove, there was no doubt, it was pushing him on. <laughs> so there's a, there, you can have a, 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 that kind of story. Um, I think then there's obviously the, you chunk things up, you know, you say, well, actually, you know, I, you know, if I get to this and there and this and there, and then, oh, I'm, oh goodness, I'm here now. Um, so there's always an element of that. And I think the final one is experience. It's like, You've been here before. If you've triumphed over it before, why should you not do it today again? And the last main question I had was, um, if you could obviously recommend or give one tip to someone that's either new to running or wants to maybe take things to the next level, what would you what would you say to them? Um, one tip. I'll probably end up giving a few, but I think remember why you're doing it. Um, you know, never lose the joy. I think there'll always be sort of moments of like anything where you've got to you know, but what you want to do well in, there's always going to be those moments where, you know, there's commitment and it feels drudgery and it's pouring rain and you think, I'm going to do this because I'm thinking about the greater outcome. But I think always, always think about it and race and run 
in a kind of way that that that, that is you know respectful of the fact that you should do things in life to enjoy them we did end up chatting for quite a while and that goes for both interviews thank you very much for okay. sitting here and talking to me thank you so much for this interview because it, but it all got me thinking back to that question i asked at the beginning Obviously, it would be easy for me to just say that we all love running for our own individual reasons, which is true. So, if you ask me, the best way to find out why we love running so much is simply to get out and talk to people, share our experiences and passion. The running community, in my opinion, is the real reason why I fell in love with running so much. And, well, I plan to keep going with it for the rest of my life. Let's get back to it then.